And I've got another fun experiment for you today. This is one you can do at home. You don't need a vacuum pump or a large hadron collider to do this one. The only things you need are a cup, so a mug like this, and it has to be one that uh, you can't see through. Um, this one was given to me by uh, one of my students many years ago, and it has the right kind of message on it. And you need a coin. Um, and so I've got a coin here. Um, interesting coin, this one. It's, um, again, given to me by another student, um, two rubles, one of my Russian students. And it's got a picture of Yuri Gagarin on the back. So we've, we've got a science coin here. And finally, what you need is just some water or liquid. Um, best of its water, because it's um, completely uh, transparent and colourless, um, that we're going to pour into the uh, mug. And the experiment we're going to do is a very famous one. Um, again, one that... Um, a lot of people may have seen at school, but I'm amazed by how many people haven't seen it. And um, it's called the coin and cup experiment. You may have noticed that when you put a straw into a liquid, or in this case, I'm just going to put a pencil in some water, that where the pencil actually goes into the liquid, it looks slightly shifted to one side. It also looks slightly wider, but it doesn't seem to join up um, with a bit of pencil that's outside the water. But if I move the camera, what's even stranger is you see a picture of the uh, pencil above, uh, but it seems to be sort of bent. It seems to be twisted to one side. And this is the effect that we're going to investigate. Um, this is uh, caused by refraction, and I'm going to use that to explain the coin and cup experiment. So if you've got your apparatus together, let me show you what you do. Um, the first thing you do is you take the coin and you put it in the bottom of the cup. Works best if it's um, right in the middle. And then the next thing you've got to do um, is a little bit unusual. You have to look down at the coin and then move your head away from the edge of the cup until the coin is just out of sight. What you've got to remember is this top part of the uh, mug or the cup is blocking your view. So I'm looking down at the coin at the moment and then as I move back and I move back and I move back slowly I just can't see the coin. And then the next thing you do is either get a friend um, or do it yourself if you can keep your head in the right position and just pour the water in so you almost completely fill the mug. And then uh, you'll be surprised uh, by what you see. You might want to pause the video here, give it a go, and then come back and I'll tell you what you see and I'll give you a bit of an explanation. So here we go, here's the mug viewed from above with the coin in the bottom of it. And I'm just going to tilt the mug and uh, move it up and down, which is equivalent to moving your head, just so the coin's just out of sight. And then if you remember, what you've got to do is pour water in. Now, the important thing here is you don't pour the water in so the coin moves. So the coin must stay where it is. But if you pour the water in ever so gently, you'll notice something rather strange happen. As the water reaches the top of the mug, you'll see slowly but surely the coin comes back into view. And so you were looking over the edge of the mug. And as you were looking over the edge of the mug, you'll notice, ah, I can see the coin now and I couldn't see it earlier. Now, if you could actually get the water back out of the mug and leave the coin where it was, and the way to do that is to use a sort of cheap plastic picnic mug and just to glue the coin into the bottom, um, it will disappear again, which is rather unusual. So um, what I've got to do is explain exactly what happens here. So time for an explanation of what was going on there. When you've got the mug empty and you put the coin in the bottom, the light from the room reflects off the coin. And if you position your head just so the edge of the cup is in the way, what's happening is um, the light from the edge of the coin is hitting the edge of the cup and any other light is passing and going over the top of your head and not into your eyes. But of course, if we take a bear's eye view of this, if we add the water, can you remember that you got that strange bending effect um, when you put the pencil in the water, where the surface was, where it changed from air to water, exactly the same thing happens here. That the light comes off the coin, but as it comes off the coin and leaves the water, it bends. And it bends, and if your eye is just lined up right, the light comes into your eye. It's as if the light has come up, changed direction, and then entered your eye. And that process of changing direction we call refraction in physics, it happens where you get different densities to light, or more importantly in this case, 
the light reflecting off the coin speeds up as it comes out of the water and in doing so has a direction change and that direction change is what tips the light over the edge and into your eye so you can actually see the coin. Well, thanks for joining Bjork and me again. I look forward to seeing you next time. <laughs> <laughs>